Well, happy birthday. Hey, welcome to The Whole Truth, where I am taking you through the entire Bible, and I might have just guessed your birthday. Actually, that's probably not true. I'm actually saying that because of the text today. Uh, I'm taking you through the entire Bible, from Genesis all the, rep, all the way to Revelation, without skipping anything. And today is Gen- Genesis. I haven't been in Genesis, Genesis since 2020. Okay. It is Deuteronomy. Today is Deuteronomy chapter 31. We are almost done with uh, the book of Deuteronomy if things hold out. Now, I've got one long chapter in there, so we'll see if I divide that up. Uh, I haven't decided how I'm going to handle that yet. But um, if I don't divide that chapter up, there's a good chance we finish up Deuteronomy this very week. Okay, anyways, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31 today, and we will do all the verses. I believe it's 31 verses, uh, Deuteronomy 31, and then all 31 verses. We'll cover those today in this video, and it's Moses' birthday. And on his birthday, what does he get? Um, He gets a reminder that he doesn't get to go into the promised land, that he's going to die soon, and that that the people of Israel, when they go in, they're going to rebel. So, what do we say to that? Happy birthday. That's what I said. I'm just kidding. Uh, it, you know, on one hand, it seems harsh, but, but rem, you know, you have to remember that uh, Moses is about 120, is what he tells us. And uh, he's lived a long life. And he knew coming into this, he knew he wasn't get, getting to go into that promised land because of what he had done at the rock all of those years ago. And so the point that I want you to see today, though, is when God predicts, well, I mean, there's lots of things we're going to draw from this, but when God predicts and tells Moses that the people are going to rebel, I want you to really pay attention to what he's, what God said the people are going to do as a reaction to their predicted rebellion, that God said this is going to happen. And I want you to also see what, at the very end, what Moses' reaction was um, when he hears this, like how he Uh, how he interpreted and what he said to the people about their current actions, what they're already doing in rebellion, and then what are they going to do when he leaves. So uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 31 today. I hope I gave you enough time to find it. I really mean it. Like pause the video, get your Bible, open up a Bible app on your phone, split the screen and open it there on your phone and read along with me. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel and said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy the nations from before you and you will di- and you shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over before you just as the Lord has said and the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites in their land when he destroyed them. The Lord will give them over to you that you may do to them according to every commandment which I commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them for the Lord your God, he is one who goes before you you. He will not leave you or forsake you. And then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage for you must go with this people to the land, which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them and you shall cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear uh, nor be dismayed. I'm going to pause there for a moment and we're going to talk about these first, what, eight verses. We're going to talk about these eight verses first. We'll kind of take it in some chunks today. So in the first eight verses, what we see is Moses is turning 120 years old. And he says to all the people, he calls them and he says in front of all of them, it is my birthday. I'm 120 years old today. That's what he said. I'm 120 years old today. By the way, um, there's uh, somebody said to me once, they said, well, birthdays were never even kept. Nobody even kept track in the ancient world of the day that they were born. That's a totally, um, you know, westernized idea that we keep track of the day that we're born. Well, I'm not saying he celebrated it, but he certainly kept track of it because he said, I'm 120 years old today. So Moses did know the day of his birth. And so he said, I'm 120 years old today. And now, by the way, I know that some people would, some commentators would say that that's just him speaking and saying like, 
I, like as of this day, I'm 120, but that's not really the way it reads. It just says that I'm 120 years old today. So I accept that for at face value. And so here's Moses saying, I'm 120 years old. And he says, but I, I can't cross over. And he can't cross over for a couple of reasons. One, you're getting an insight into the way that Moses looked, his appearance and, and his stature, because he says, I can't go in and out anymore. I can't, I can't move the way that I, I used to move. I'm, I'm 120. So 120 years old. He can't go in and out the way that he used to. And the Lord told him, you can't go in. So what is God, what has God said? That Joshua is going to take you in. Now, who's Joshua? Remember, Joshua's got to be old at this point too. Because Joshua had to have at least been 20 years old or older when Israel had rejected going into the promised land the first time. That's how the story went. God delivered them out of Egypt, brought them to Mount Sinai, gave them the law, took them one year later, takes them to the edge of the promised land, and Israel refuses to go in. They fought and they said, we're not going in because there's giants in the land. Remember, they had sent in the 12 spies. Joshua and Caleb were the only two of those spies who came out and said, no, 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 let's go. Let's fight. Let's go in. God's with us. But the people wouldn't listen. So they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. So let's say that Joshua was 25 when that happened, when they sent in the spies. If he was 25 when they sent the spies in, it's been 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. They're now at the edge of the promised land getting ready to go in. So now Joshua is 65. So here is, you know, really old Moses who can't go in and out anymore saying, but Joshua, he will lead the charge. He will lead you in. And why is that special? Why is that important? Because Joshua was there at the beginning. He was there as they were delivered out of Egypt. He was there for the plagues. He remembers all of what happened in Egypt. He knew all about that. And he was the one who said, him and Caleb were the ones who said, let's go in and let's lead the charge. And God is with us. God will fight our battles. But the people rebelled and the people wouldn't. So God promised that the whole generation of people was going to die off except for two guys, Joshua and Caleb. And here they are in that position right now. Everybody who was under the age of 20 or not born yet, they've wandered in the wilderness for 40 years as well. And they get to go in. They're the generation that gets to go in, but they didn't have any say whether or not they would go in all those years ago. That was up to the adults 20 years and older. And so Moses is encouraging the people, I don't get to go in, but Joshua gets to go in. And then he pulls up Joshua and he says to Joshua in front of all the people, be strong and be courageous. The Lord is with you. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. What um, what a powerful moment. Can you imagine what that must have been like to remember in your mind 40 years earlier when Moses stood there with his staff and struck the water and the sea parted? Can you imagine what it was like when Moses called for the plagues and they had befallen on Egypt? And here is Moses in his old age looking at you with those old eyes. And he says to Joshua, be strong and be courageous. The Lord is with you. Well, you know, the truth is that we can find some application for ourselves there. That's the story that really happened, real people. But the application for you and I is strong as well because the Lord is with us. And he tells us that he will dwell within us if we believe in Jesus, the son that the Holy Spirit will dwell in us and greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So what is it that you might be facing? You know, I'm facing some pretty strong things right now myself. And you know, one of the things I continue to remind myself, greater is he who is in me. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and sound mind. And he's given the same to you. If you believe in Jesus, if you put your faith in him, he is telling you, be strong, be courageous. Are you hearing me today? God is telling you as well, be strong, be courageous, do the thing that I've called you to do. Even if it seems like the world is against you, even if it seems like everyone is against you, be strong and be courageous. Stand for what is right. Don't be, don't be dismayed by the giants. Don't go back to an old way of thinking. Be strong and be courageous and do the thing that God has called you to do. Maybe even for you, maybe you're like Joshua. Maybe it's been years. Maybe you're in your 60s and you're saying, but can I really do whatever this thing is that God's calling me to? He has said, be strong, be courageous and do it. If he is with you, who can be against you? All right, let's read on in the chapter. Pick up your Bibles again. Let's pick up in verse nine. So Moses 
wrote this law and delivered it to the priests, the sons of Levite, who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord and all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, at the appointed time, in the year of the release, at the Feast of Tabernacles, when all uh, Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women, little ones and strangers who, and strangers who are within your gates, that they may hear and that they may learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully observe all the words of this law and that their children who have not known it may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land which you cross the Jordan to possess." Pause again. We're now pausing at verse 13. And the reason that we're pausing is because I, I want you to understand what Moses just did. He wrote down the law that God told him to write down. And he calls for the Levites who are helpers with the priest. And he tells them, put this with near the Ark of the Covenant. And here's what I want you to do with it. Every year, I want you to read it in the hearing of the people at the Feast of Tabernacles when all of Israel is gathered up together. Women, children, men, strangers, everybody, read it in their hearing that they may learn to fear the Lord. That would mean that they learn to respect the Lord and respect what he's given them and the blessings that they have. They're learning to respect that. Well, do you know the feast that we are specifically told that Israel was skipping and not doing? You get to the book of Nehemiah. I got to preach through Nehemiah a few years ago. And by the way, that was such a cool series. What a great time uh, that we had in the Lord in that in that uh, time there in, uh, in our little church before we had a big old building. Um, there was just something so special about that little place. And, and uh, we were going through the book of Nehemiah. That's what, that's what I was preaching through. And Nehemiah, they get to this point in the book of Nehemiah when they realize, they find this law and they realize we were supposed to be celebrating this Feast of Tabernacles. It's where they would set up tents and they would dwell in tents. Uh, the Bible called them in some translations booths, B-O-O-T-H-S. And I stood in my pulpit and I kept saying Feast of Booth, which is what it is, but I... I Got a little accent going on, and people thought I was saying Feast of Booze, B-O-O-Z-E. And I remember one guy, he was like, I was kind of thinking that's my kind of feast. But anyways, uh, it, it totally joking. He was totally joking about that. But uh, it, I just had to st start saying Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, Feast of Tents. And everybody was supposed to do this for a week, and they were supposed to hear the law and read the law. Isn't it interesting that in, when you get to Nehemiah, this is after, after the captivity and after the bad things Israel had done, that what we find is that they had skipped this. They had not done the Feast of Tabernacles which means that they had not read the law in the hearing of the people. Moses said, read the law in the hearing of the people so that they will learn to fear the Lord. But they didn't read the law in the hearing of the people. They didn't celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And what ended up happening? They ended up in captivity. And that's what's going to be predicted next. Let's read on. This is now in verse 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, the days approach when you must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of meeting that I may inaugurate him. And so Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of meeting. And now the Lord appeared at the tabernacle in a pillar of cloud. And the pillar of cloud stood above the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, you will rest with your fathers. And this people will rise and play the harlot with the gods of the foreigners of the land where they go to be among them. And they will forsake me and break my covenant, which I, which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be aroused against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them. And they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall fall them, so that they may say in that day, Have not these evils come upon us, because our God is is not among us. And I will surely hide my face in that day because all the evil which they have done in that day, they have turned to other gods. Now, therefore, write down this song for yourselves and teach it to your children in Israel. Put it in their mouths that they may that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel when I have brought them to the land flowing with milk and honey of which I swore to your fathers, to their fathers. And they have eaten and filled themselves and grown fat and 
then they turn will turn to other gods and serve them, and they will provoke me and break my covenant. And then it shall be when many evils and troubles have come upon them that this song will testify against them as a witness, for it is for it will not be forgotten in the mouths of their des- descendants. For I know the inclination of their behavior today, even before I have brought them into the land of which I swore to give them. Therefore Moses wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. Then he inaugurated Joshua the son of Nun and said, Be strong and of good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land of which I swore to them, and I will be with you. And so it was when Moses had completed writing the words of the law in a book, then they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there as a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. And if today, if today, while I am yet alive with you, you have been rebellious against the Lord, then how much more after my death? Gather to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their hearing and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death, you will become utterly corrupt and turn aside from the way which I've commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Okay, so Moses, it's your birthday. You've called up for Joshua. God said, write these laws down in a book. Moses then goes and writes these words of the law down, and he t- commands the Levites to take him and put him beside the Ark of the Covenant. God called for Moses to come into um, the tabernacle, and Moses and Joshua came into the tabernacle, and God told him this. He said, the people are going to rebel. Moses know this. When they go into the land, the people are going to rebel. They're going to play the harlot. They're going to go after other gods, the gods of the foreigners that are in that land. They're going to go follow after that. And here's what God said. God said, I'm going to turn my face from them in that day. I'm going to, send, I'm going to let people come in and trouble them. There's going to be troubles facing them from every side. And then you know what they're going to say? Surely all these things have happened because God is not with us. He's not among us. For Israel, yes, this is a prediction of what Israel would do, and Israel did exactly this. God said it first before Moses said it. God said, if this is what the people do before we even get into the promised land, here's what they're going to do after they get into the promised land. And they're going to get to a point, everything's going to be so bad, and they're going to say, this is all because God is not among us. Do you understand that? And instead of saying, this is because we've been rebellious, this is because we've been bad, this is because we've sinned, instead they'll say, no, it's not because we've done something wrong, it's because God's not with us. Well, God was with them going in, God did promise them going in, but they've been rebellious. Oh, my friend, how about you? How about us? Let's, let's do this again. I love to do this. Let's look at our nation. A nation as a whole, what do we see as a nation? What do we cry out? How many times have we heard this? If God is real, why does he let all of these bad things happen? Well, friends, maybe all the bad things are happening because we're bad. Maybe all the bad things are happening. Now, that's not to say that if we're good, that only good things will happen. It's not the way that that works. There's evil in the world. There's bad in the world because there's sin in the world. But certainly by living in sin as a nation, we are not helping that fact. And how many churches have maybe even done the same thing? How many churches have cried out Ichabod? That's a sermon and a message for another time. Ichabod, no glory here. That's what that's what will be said later. Somebody will name their child Ichabod, and it means no glory here, that God's not here. How many How many churches have looked at it and said, you know, how come we don't have baptisms? How come we don't have salvations? How come we don't see anybody delivered? How come this and how come that? How come we don't see God working anymore? Maybe the question is not why is God not among us or none of these things are happening because God's not among us. Maybe the question is, are you doing something that you need to repent of? Is there something in your church? Is there something in your congregation? Is there something in your leadership that you need to repent of that you need to get out of? And I'm going to say the same for your life. You know, before you go and say, well, God's obviously not blessing this. God's not with me. The first question I have is, are you living in a way that you should be? Is there something that you need to repent of? If there is, I want you to go back one video to Deuteronomy 30 and go watch that video. If right now that's speaking to you, go watch that video. Go back one video, just go to the playlist and go back one video to Deuteronomy chapter 30 and and watch as God said, if you'll return to me, I will bless you. I will heal you. 
But listen, friends, Israel wasn't going to do that. They were going to be bad, and then they're going to blame God and say, all of this is happening because God is not with us. How many times do we think that maybe something's not blessed and that God's not with us or not in something, but it's not that God's not with us or not in something. It's that we've been living rebelliously. Now, hey, listen, it's just the truth. It's, are you looking at stuff on your phone? Are you, are you looking at stuff on that device that you, you know you shouldn't be looking at? Are you entertaining things there that you shouldn't be entertaining? Are you, are you being faithful with your spouse? Do you know that you're drinking too much? Friends, how can you ask God or blame God for not blessing you if you're going to live in a way that's under the curse? If you're not going to take the freedom that he's offered you and, and live in the freedom that he's given you, a freedom away from sin, if you're going to crawl back under those chains, if you're going to dive back into that pool of dirty water, then how can you say, well, God's not with me? Friends, maybe it's not that, it's not that God's not with you. Maybe God wants you to repent and come out of that. And then he'll bless those things that you're involved in. That's a hard word, but it's a true one. And I know that it's for somebody. Okay, so what happened next was Moses did what God had said in, in front of all the people. He you know, wrote the law and he inaugurated uh, Joshua. And then he says this to the Levites and to the leaders. He says this to them. He says, you're going to rebel. And, and this is what Moses said. If this is the way you behaved when I was here then I can certainly imagine that you're going to be rebellious when I'm gone. And you know, that was the truth of Israel. That's, that is what happened over and over. As a matter of fact, it's the entire book of Judges. I'm getting ready to teach through Judges uh, with uh, my uh, fellow pastor at church, Kirk. Uh, he's been here on The Whole Truth before with us. Kirk's going to be teaching with me on Wednesday nights. We're going to teach through the entire book of Judges. I'm really excited about that. But Judges is this cycle of Israel they're good, everything's good for a while, and then they're bad and they're rebellious and God lets an oppressor come in and the oppressor comes in and all the people are so upset and they're so tore up about this oppressor that they repent of their sins, they cry out to God, they say, God, forgive us. And God does forgive them and he sends them a deliverer, a judge. The judge comes in and helps deliver the people and as long as the judge is alive and, and well, the people remain good. But when the judge dies off, guess what they do? Right back into it. Same cycle, they go back to being bad and then God sends an oppressor, and they repent and cry out to God, and God sends a judge, and the judge helps them to be delivered, and then as long as the judge lives, they're good, but when the judge dies, guess what? They go back to being bad, and this just goes round and round, and you know, I would say that sometimes in our lives, and, and we see the same thing, that we see that we're good for a while, and then we slip back into being bad, and we go round and round in this cycle of being good as long as the leader is there. Moses was like, look, y'all were bad. I, I love the fact that he pointed out, he was like, y'all were bad even when I was here. I can only imagine what you're going to do when I'm not here. And so what did Moses say? Let this law stand between you. Let's put this in a song, teach it to your children, and let this law stand between you. And so what's the last thing that we can take is this, that if we want to break that cycle, here's what we need to do. We need to be in God's word. We need to be in his presence. We need to learn to fear the Lord because it is the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom. Let's put our trust and our faith in him. Let's remember who he is and let's live for him and he'll make the difference in our lives. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you come back tomorrow as we get into Deuteronomy chapter 32. So close. See you then.